Have you ever woke up with bullfrogs on your mind? Have you ever woke up with bullfrogs on your mind? That's a sure sign you got bullfrogs on your mind. They say every family has a legend. Ours is about bullfrogs. Our legend is that my great-grandfather, Clifford Bird Gosney, introduced the bullfrog to Kentucky. Could it be true that my ancestor was responsible for a new species in Kentucky? I had to find out. So I came to Kentucky to the place where my ancestors lived in search of the truth. It was my great uncle, Cliff Gosney Jr., who first told me the story. The background of the horror story goes back to when I was a pre-teenager, when Daddy bought the farm. He called it the farm. It was never a farm. It was 29 acres of, of nothing land, uh, about three miles, two miles from here. And he bought this piece of land for, in the Depression for practically nothing. And then he bought an old log cabin and had it moved to the, with the, the farm. I'll use the word farm, but it was never a farm. And I would uh, be there with my daddy, um, sometimes at night, usually on the weekends. And uh, he would uh, lay in bed and tell me about the, his future, his vision for the farm. And um, he was not a well-educated man. He finished the fifth grade. But he had a lot of ideas that were uh, sort of ahead of his time. And um, he envisioned, back then, a word that he used a lot called a menagerie. He went on 29 acres. He wanted to recreate a game reserve similar to what they have in Africa. In, but instead of 29 acres in Africa, it's 29,000 acres. At that time in Kentucky, there were absolutely no deer. No white, deers, deer were gone. So he thought deer was one of the things he was gonna put in. Jackrabbits, um, peacocks, pheasants, quail, and um, frogs. The farm was in Campbell County. Today, some of the land is part of a county park. The rest is privately owned. A cabin my great-grandfather built with his own hands is still standing. Frog's story dates back to the 1930s. The end of the, the, the shallow side, not the opposite the dam side of the lake. He built another dam and um, put a fence around it, <coughs> a board fence. About I remember that. Four foot high. You remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from Texas, he got the idea of, of bringing in these bullfrogs to northern Kentucky and having the only uh, bullfrogs available. But he had them in this frog pond, and that was fine for a while. But he forgot about the fact that frogs have eggs, and eggs turn into tadpoles and tadpoles uh, get out. Wash over the hill. <laughs> they wash over. Well, even and Uncle Bud next door, who, well, he's, 
82, I believe. But he remembers, you know, when your dad brought him in. And he tells the same. So I know you're telling the truth because he tells the same story. But he says even some of the bullfrogs themselves, like, you know, they can jump. And they jump over the fence. And From farmers around the downstream, the area said, you know, man, there's some big frogs around this place. <laughs> and, and, and the stories went on down, all the way down. And <clears throat> that, those were the, that was the beginning of the bullfrogs in uh, Kentucky. Janet and Ron Rouse own a pond just down the road from the site of the original frog pond. Well, they're, they're moving around out there, especially under that the oh, tree the out there. Yeah, I get uh, some shade. Do they, like, do they also dig holes? I noticed um, along the bank there were holes about this big. Most of their little caves are under, under the edge of the water. Do you think that Grandpa was responsible for bringing the frog in here? The big frogs. Oh, yeah. There's always been green frogs around. But not the but you think he's, But you think that this family legend has truth to it? Yeah. Uh, Texas frogs. frogs. Yeah. Texas frogs. Yeah. I have, no, I have never had any doubt about it, nor have I had any evidence to the contrary. Uh, you know, maybe there's somebody else sitting in a chair just like this with another story that happened down in, uh, uh, you know, in some other county along the river. I don't know. Um, but I know at the time, he told me that he was introducing the Texas bullfrog to Kentucky. We're trying to get some perspectives on whether or not my great-grandpa was responsible for bringing that frog here, and it sounds like... Well, as far as I'm concerned, he was, yes. He started this frog farm, thinking that he would make a lot of money doing it, but uh, it didn't work out too great on account of the frogs didn't stay with him. That's the reason you can't raise them, you know, like that. I don't know how he would uh, pen them up, because they have a, a natural instinct to travel. Did you ever witness them making an escape? Oh, God, yes. You, you drive by there every night, and you could see them in the headlights on the fence, you know. Sometimes maybe it'd be four or five at one time you'd see them there. Almost every time. And there's always some of them run over in the road in front of the thing, you know. Well, I know that 90% of the big frogs came out of that lake over there because <laughs> it was thousands and thousands of tadpoles, you know. I don't think anybody's ever tried it. I think he's the first one that ever tried raising them around here, as far as I know. So this isn't really the actual frog pond? Well, the, the site is exactly the site. The pond, no, the pond is gone. The original lake is gone. All this has been rebuilt. Which side of the pond, where were the frogs in well, their this, this, little the, fence? The existing area? lake here is about twice as big as the frog pond was. And the entire pond was encircled with the fencing? That's right, that's right. And so when the eggs and the tadpoles went downstream. Which direction did they travel from they went here? In, they went into the big this lake. This way? And then from the big lake, they went into the uh, into a creek. And then from the creek, they went into a, another creek. So all that direction? Ultimately into the Licken River. Okay. Down, this all the way downstream to the Licken River. <laughs> so we're... <laughs> <laughs> so th this is close to it. So the lake, this is the spot, the, the place, place yeah. where uh -huh. the Kentucky bullfrog originated. So maybe we should have an historical marker here. I think that would be a really a good idea. We've made our mark in history, haven't we? The land itself is I found another witness. A man who owns lakes not far from the farm. I remember the guy's name, but uh, I remember the name real well, uh, but I can't, I can't put a face with it anymore. I'm sorry to say. No, that's okay. <laughs> but I did hear the Gosneys. There, there, was, uh, there was nice people from around that I've ever heard. You said you had heard that about a man the, who brought in some frogs and they got correct. out? Yeah. <laughs> so you think that that was maybe my great grandfather? Oh, I, would, I would probably be sh pretty sure it was. When we had our business going, you know, all the, the people standing around at the bar or the tables would talk around and they said, yeah, see, you got some. Them big Texas bullfrogs down there. I said, Boy, that'd be nice. <laughs> As it turned out, it didn't, didn't work out too well. Frogs won't stay. They go where they want to go. It, it's a problem to try to uh, put 
new species in any area. <laughs> Right here and right by the, um, right at the corner, we were just going back and forth yeah, between those, that's there. where they were popping up and they just, we would go away and they'd come back. You know what? We, there's one up. You see him? Looking right at me. Sit there laughing, laughing to keep from crying. Mama got him, Papa got him, Sister got him, and my brother got him. Woke up this morning and Grandpa had him too. The Kentucky Time Star. What you know about that? I got the bullfrog blue. Now, if you look at the post first, this typically the best. Call up my doctor. Was not feeling well. Call up my doctor. Was not feeling well. Inside his bag, said, well, well, you don't need no doctor, you don't need no pill, you don't need no doctor, you don't need no pill, take my advice, it'll surely cure your ill. Something's been torn out of this one. I wonder if it has anything to do with bullfrogs. June 19th, 1942. Frog gigging season opens for Kentuckians. Since the bag limit and close season have been placed on the pond, bull, or jumbo frogs in order to prevent their extermination in Kentucky. So 1942, the bullfrog is mentioned in Frankfort, Kentucky. We're finding stuff, just not exactly. Exactly what you're looking for. You're mm -hmm. you're on the trail, mm -hmm. Phil. You're mm -hmm. finding some things. Campbell County, because there's that. Oh yeah, that's the good the Alexandria. Oh, you want to see a picture of it? Oh yeah. Here, Clifford Gosney rides what is reported to be the first motorcycle in the town of Alexandria. And down here is the Gosney Auto Baseball Team. He played baseball until he was until he was quite old. I'm so sorry we can't narrow it down further for you because there's that needle and it's in that haystack somewhere. That's right. You'll find it. <laughs> you will. Well, what you need is Kentucky green. Well, what you need is Kentucky green. The prettiest place that you've ever seen. <laughs> so you all grew up. You, you grew up there. Oh yeah. So yeah. you grew right, up there. We lived as well. right there in that little house. There. That first little house. Yeah, right there on in. the road. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, actually, we came there when I was ten, and he was about eight. Eight. Yeah. Okay. My stepfather worked for Clifford for years, and uh, it was just—I uh, mean, he was more Cliff. I think was just an icon in this area. Definitely. I mean, he was turkeys, hams, smoking hams, and raising turkeys, and uh, playing golf. Not the regular golf, but goofy golf. Tell me a little more about goofy golf. Well, they had these golf sticks. I mean, they looked like a hockey stick, <laughs> but they were, instead of being square on the, they rounded them off, and, uh, and of course, they just played with the regular golf rules. And they'd hit down, these guys would laugh, you know, somebody would drive one, just like we do now, you know, drive it all over the place and it gets so funny. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I remember about Cliff, he was always suntanned. Always dark. Always dark with his dark hair and he had twinkly eyes. Myrtle had those same twinkly eyes. I just love Cliff and Myrtle. 
Cliff was always smiling. Always, always, always. And he loved to get a joke on people. He would. It, it was his personality that just put him over the top, I think. Of course, kids, and you, you tend to have these heroes, and we always looked up to Cliff and Myrtle, always. What was Myrtle like? Did, was she with him, or did she sort of let him go? Oh, she was thing? with him quite a bit, you know. Uh, she was quieter. Yeah. Myrtle did not like the farm. No. Uh -huh. And uh, she, she, she wasn't out there too much, but she'd drive out and yeah. stay maybe the weekends and that. And yeah. They served a lot of people and they had a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, she was sweet. According to Cliff Jr., is when um, his father, Cliff Sr., brought the frogs, went to Texas, and brought back Texas bullfrogs <laughs> with the plan of having a frog farm and selling the frogs for people to cook frog legs. Oh. And do you remember anything about that? I don't remember, remember anything. About anything. About that. I don't remember. Uh. Do you remember eating any frogs? around that time? No, the only thing we ate was turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they would have remembered something about the frogs, but since they weren't there for nine years after Great Grandpa brought the frogs to the property, um, they just, they didn't know anything about it. Um, they didn't even seem to have heard anything about it, so I don't know. Turn right on Alexandria Pike. Turn left on East Main Street. What we're doing is investigating a claim that my great grandfather, Clifford Gosney, brought bullfrogs to the area and that he introduced the bullfrog to northern Kentucky. The property was located off of Racetrack Road and most of the farm became um, part of Campbell County Park, which is now the A.J. Jolly Park. So that's where the land was where these frogs were brought. They definitely were brought from Texas and, and, dis and dispersed there from that point. And we have some local people who have said that before those frogs came, um, there were no bullfrogs, and then there were. So they're telling us that they believe it to be true. Were these extra big frogs? We, our understanding is that before the Gosney frogs came, the frogs were smaller, and um, like this big, and that his frogs were bigger. I think things are bigger in Texas. <laughs> so the Texas bullfrogs were maybe bigger bullfrogs. Well, we can come on inside and we'll take a look. Okay, that sounds great. These are family photos, but I don't see Gosney, actual get Gosney, but oh, I take that back, here we are. Here's Gosney family okay. uh, photos. So there's the garage. There's it. Yeah. So there's empty, empty pages. Yes. I wonder what, what, what went there. I don't know. Something has been removed unbeknownst to us. Because uh, when we build, build these albums, every page is filled and there's no reason to put an empty page. So someone has helped so themselves. Someone came in and has taken a photo out of this book, or two yes. it looks like at least. Yes. Is it possible that there might have been photos of the frogs in here? Uh, could be. I don't know. Anything's... We, we do not know. Do you recall anyone else coming in recently and requesting the Gosney album? Uh, I could check our uh, uh, sign-in sheet. Hmm. So... Well, it remains a mystery. Yes. We were told we couldn't film in the aquarium, so we're going in with a hidden camera. I wanted to learn more about frogs.
sort of rule the roost in this tank. Um, and, but they, they kind of stay under this log and they scare the leopard frogs. The leopard frogs stay over in the corner. My young guy told me. And he said those were his favorite frogs in the whole exhibit. Funny looking. Oh, I made it! Oh, man! Elliot Clark and Gabe Mashinot hunted bullfrogs together when they were kids. They always released them. Just trying to get the rod tip and not the hook. Oh, they just pretty much hooked themselves. Oh! <laughs> hey, You guys want him? Not <laughs> I want to see him. I might want to touch him. But I think I'd lose him if you let me hold him. Yeah, you, you gotta, they, they, they'll, they'll squirm out pretty easy. You, you see a little bit of blood on him, but you can, if you throw him back in the water right now, right. he would Just go, like a fish. he would go right back and he'd be fine. I've just, I've never seen a frog. I mean, in real, <laughs> like, like this. Oh my gosh. What happens if I kiss him? He might turn in to be a prince. <laughs> wow. This is pretty typical size. I've seen them a lot bigger, but this is the kind you would take to eat if you were wanting to do that. He was up under the hole, so it was hard to dangle just the hook. So he was biting the, uh, the tip of the rod. So I had to pull the hook in through the top of the pole so that he would be able to bite the hook that way. Our family lore is that my great-grandfather brought bullfrogs to this area. Okay. Sounds like your grandfather thinks that might be possible. I would think so because they, they migrate and if they, uh, if they escaped out of your grandpa's pond, this isn't too far from where that was at. So I would say there's a really good chance that the population in this lake, or these lakes, came from uh, came from your grandfather's. Have you ever woke up with bullfrogs on your bullfrogs on your mind? Have you ever woke up with bullfrogs on your mind? That's a sure sign you got bullfrogs on your mind. I'm talking to John McGregor, herpetologist for the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. How fast can bullfrogs spread over a geographical area? A large female bullfrog can lay up to maybe as many as 10,000 eggs at once, and that forms a, a film on the surface of a pond that may be five feet across. So and that's a lot of eggs. And uh, then those eggs will hatch in just a few days, but the tadpole uh, <coughs> takes a long time to grow up. Uh, so then when the young bullfrogs, when they uh, transform, they're usually uh, an inch to an inch and a half long, and then they disperse. And they may, a young bullfrog may, may go a mile or more, uh, sometimes even further than that, to, uh, to find you know, a suitable habitat and invade a new territory. They're carnivores or predators. They eat animal life, and they will, a bullfrog will eat anything that it can catch and swallow, and that includes uh, smaller bullfrogs, uh, snakes, turtles, all kinds of things have been recovered from bullfrog stomachs. A lot of insects, particularly the smaller bullfrogs, but then the bigger ones, 
eat bigger things. And you know, we've had bats and birds and, and uh, just every creature you can imagine. Crayfish are a pretty important food for large bullfrogs. In my family, there's a legend that my great-grandfather, Clifford Gosney, brought bullfrogs from Texas to his small farm off of Racetrack Road in Alexandria, Kentucky. But he was unable to contain them, and the frogs got out. And there were multiple frog sightings throughout the area, these large bullfrogs. And um, family legend has it that my great-grandfather brought the bullfrog to northern Kentucky. From a biological standpoint, is there any credibility to this legend? I don't think so. Uh, I've been gathering uh, distribution information on Kentucky amphibians and reptiles for a long time, and uh, we have bullfrog records that, uh, <clears throat> that date clear back into the early 1800s. They were common in the state then. Have you ever eaten frog legs? I think the night I was engaged, I ate frog legs and turtle soup. And uh, I've never eaten frog legs since, and I probably never will. <laughs> Come on in, ladies. Yeah. We've been working on this frog film for, for a few days in the area, and every time I ask someone, where should we go to get frog legs? They say naughty pine on the bayou. Thank you. Thank you very much. What we're taking out right here is the saute. And so that's like a scampi garlic, butter, lemon. And Jason is going to fry some frogs for you. Go through the whole routine, which goes into egg and milk and flour. Wow. Okay. So just flour, basically? Yeah. Salt and pepper? Flour. Just flour. That's a seasoned flour and the healers. Okay. Then you put them in there and we just shake them up. Make sure they get all wet. Dump the fryer. Just dip them in. And that's it. Then we'll time them for three minutes. story at um, over dinner one night he just says well you know daddy introduced the bullfrog to Kentucky <laughs> and this is where you live now or you live up now here? I live over okay. here in this little house okay. yeah this is my grandfather's camp okay. which was Cliff Gosney's property and Cliff Gosney owned it and my grandfather rented it and we would go out there as kids little kids to play and then our place that Dad bought what is right down the road. I mean, it's maybe less than two miles away from Gosney's. Okay. And it's been a family thing within my family about this huge bullfrog that my brother caught at Gosney's Lake. 
and brought home. And he put it in our basement in a box. The frog got out of the box in the middle of the night. He hopped all the way across the floor. Now, it's, quite, it's really quite amazing. He came up a full flight of stairs, and we had an accordion door at the top of the basement stairs. And that frog went underneath that accordion door. He hopped through the kitchen, into the living room, into underneath another accordion door, into my mom and dad's bedroom, up onto the bed, and he landed on my mother's chest. So she opens up her eyes, and there's this big bullfrog staring her in the eyes, and it scared her to death. How big was that frog, and can, were there other frogs in the area that you remember that were smaller? I re remember the frog being a big frog, mm -hmm. but where it comes in with my memory on the size of the frogs was with our own property. Back in the day, in the 50s, 60s, um, I would go frog gigging with my, with my dad. There were tons of frogs back then, and they were much, much larger than they are now. I still live at the property. Mm -hmm. The frogs aren't anything like they were back then, mm -hmm. they're, and they're also not as plentiful. And I had talked to my brother. Him and I really do believe that Cliff Gosney probably was responsible for bringing in a larger strain of frog, a larger strain of bull frogs. They probably traveled from his lake, they ended up at our lake, some of them. We ended up with these large frogs. And they were, they were, it was, they, in comparison, the frogs today, a large frog would sit on a saucer and seriously, those frogs would sit on a plate. You have to be I'm Anne. Hi. Hi. Is there a okay. scientific basis for this claim? Uh, I wish I could say yes, but I'm afraid not. Yeah. Um, the distribution pattern historically for bullfrogs ranges from Canada all the way down to Florida and from the East Coast all the way out to um, end of Texas, um, all Oklahoma, and on up, uh, up in through Minnesota. So it's, it's quite a uh, large range, and, and Kentucky's right in the middle of it. So it's had bullfrogs for a long time. Yeah. Okay, so, so a bullfrog, if it's a bullfrog from Texas or a bullfrog from Canada or from Florida, it's really the same, the same bullfrog. Still the same species, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they might vary by size? They could. Uh, there could be some size variation, yeah. They have a, grow, a short growing season uh, up north. They, they might possibly be smaller than the ones in Texas, for example, right. just because they have a longer growing period. So if, let's just say if the... Hypothetically, if the mm -hmm. Texas frogs came up and they were bigger because they had a longer growing season in Texas than Kentucky, uh -huh. could they have interbred with the local frogs and typically, yeah, sort of integrated? Yes, yeah, they might have you know a little bit larger um, genes that, that gave offspring that were a little bit larger. And you've probably heard frog calls, okay? So bullfrogs have a very deep, resonating frog call. Well, that frog call does several things. It, it helps them establish a territory. They basically defend a set of resources, and the female will come in and look for the male frog that has the best resources. If you had a, a Texas bullfrog, it would give the same call. There's no southern dialect <laughs> in, the, in the bullfrog. <laughs> Not that I know of, anyhow. I haven't really listened that closely, but there's not like a you know bullfrog drawl or anything like that. Would there be any? Would there be any data from the 30s or 40s? Were people counting frogs back then? Really not. Um, it wasn't until we started to see declines, or people started to stop, stop seeing frogs. How does the future look for the bullfrog in Kentucky? Is it in um, any danger? I don't think so. I have not seen anything to indicate that the bullfrog is affected by uh, the chytridomyces, the, the, the chytrid fungus, or the ranavirus. All right? And so that's, that's a positive for them because that really has been wiping out lots of organisms. Um, bullfrogs adapt well to disturbed areas. 
And so habitat destruction, so long as they can find some kind of a pond or slough on the side of the road, you know, I think they're going to do fine with that. Their tadpoles, in fact, uh, can live up to two years, um, and so they'll overwinter. Wow. Yeah, so they get to be very big. And so, you know, I think they'll, I think they'll do fine. This is Lincoln River Outfitters. Uh, it's on the Lincoln River in uh, Cynthiana, Kentucky. Uh, my dad owns and operates this farm. It's approximately 650 acres. Uh, we cater and guide to uh, disabled children and veterans. Um, we try to give them hunts at no charge. What about frogs? Have people ever come out wanting to gig frogs or hunt for frogs? No one has ever really come out requesting hunting or gigging frogs. <laughs> so we're the first? Yes. Y'all are the first guided frog expedition that Lincoln River Outfitters has done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm ready. In the cargo hold. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's go get a frog. This pond probably has, I think from my estimate, probably has about 14 dozen frogs in it. Not all bullfrogs, but 14 dozen of various species. Uh -huh. um, some bullfrogs, some greens, some leopards. Uh, I have definitely seen some bullfrogs out of here that are 12 inches what? from nose to tail. It is very difficult to, to try to capture them by net and to capture them live during the day. At night, it's a lot easier. You, when you hit them in the eyes with a the light, they are, they are just as blind as a bat, and it, you, just, you can almost reach down and pick them up. I think they know we're trying to catch them. The bottoms on these ponds are real soft, and that makes them good for frogs because during the wintertime, they can go burrow underneath the mud and hibernate. Kentucky sinks oh deep. Oh my gosh. Welcome to Kentucky, ladies. Oh my gosh. I have to be honest, when I took the one, the first step, I thought, this might be soft. <laughs> And then I sunk. <laughs> it so, might be soft. <laughs> like, oh my god! It's like Amy. Oh, I'm tired. It's so hard to catch them daylight, so we're gonna wait till it gets dark, and then we're gonna try to go back out and hit them with spotlight, blind them, and net them because uh, we're trying to catch them live and release them live. If the theory is true, the frogs actually came in and they migrated backwards here. They migrated upstream. <laughs> this is flowing south to north this on this river. This flows south to north? Yes. This flows south to north and it meets up with the South Fork and Licking River and then flows into the Ohio River. This is actually the main fork of the Licking River. So. In theory, they would have they would have migrated upstream and came and populated the whole eastern side of Kentucky. Is that possible? It is very possible that it was when your grandfather put these in. 
and they migrated out to the river that they populated there. It is very possible. Cut. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> That's how you catch a frog. Just that simple. <laughs> <laughs> they do have some strong legs now. This is a prime example. Oh, oh. where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> he is of a bullfrog. Oh, yay! <laughs> when he was fighting in the net like that, I thought that's gotta be a bullfrog because bullfrogs have attitude, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one definitely has got an attitude. He got oh, the large ears. ears. Got the large that. ears. That's definitely a juvenile bullfrog. Cool. Good catch. And he was not injured in any way. No way at all. <laughs> He'll be healthy and right back in the water and having little froggies. So Say, can I go get bugs? Thank you. Time for bugs. Time for bugs. Well, there's plenty of them. Time for bugs. Eat up, bud. <laughs> See if we can find another. Okay. And we have here a, this is a green frog. It's got the real green head, mm -hmm. got the same ear yeah. of the bullfrog. And I think he's anxious to go back and have a little dinner. Get on down to the river. Now, bend. let's see what we got here. We get on oh, down oh, 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 to that river bend. A Kentucky bullfrog. Get on down to the bluegrass never ends. I spotted it. Open your ears. I'm just a little Don't fella. You feel so good. Lord, open your ears. Don't you feel so good? Well, get yourself a shot of bullfrog blue. Maybe there's a way to go directly to the source. My great uncle, Cliff Gosney Jr., um, one night at dinner announced that my great grandfather, his father, had introduced the bullfrog to Kentucky. Your great grandfather was before his time. Mm -hmm. Basically, that pioneer is how that comes in. Uh, some would say that would have been a little bit more on the eccentric side. Don't tell him he can't do it because he's going to do it. He, mm -hmm. he definitely did not let anything stop him. He didn't know where it was going with him. But at the same time, it wasn't like he was literally just had any foresight to where this was going with these bullfrogs. It was just another one of his wild ideals. Mm -hmm. he, okay? So it's like, because I get that there's other things that he kind of went off into. Some didn't do so. Well. No. no <laughs> so. I, guess, I think you're right. Yeah. And it's like if he had an ideal, he ran with it. Mm -hmm. Didn't care if it was going to make money or not. And it wasn't always about money with him either. Mm -hmm. It was more the scheme, the challenge of it. Okay. But he's, I mean, he literally is saying that he, he's acknowledging, you know, I did that on purpose and had, had a heck of a time doing it. Great, great fun. Mm -hmm. And so it's, he'll still do that today. And when given the opportunity, mm -hmm. it may have something to do even with you want to search out all these bullfrogs. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, he's mischievous. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> he always looked for those things to be a little bit different than anybody else. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what he did, whether it was a hobby or whatever. Mm -hmm. He always wanted it to be uniquely his in some way. He wanted his stamp on But it. he could speak anyone's language. He was a talker, and he could talk with anyone. Um, 
and uh, not, not in any kind of manipulative form, okay? Uh, he was an extremely likable person in that respect. Um, and he drew people to him. People would be drawn to him just from his charisma. But, I mean, there is truth to the frogs. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, but he had a great imagination. So he is introducing it. I mean, he, he is correct. But you got to remember, we've got what you call that fantastic storyteller. He's going to make everything he does grandiose anyway. But the frog legs never did make it to the kitchen, I can tell you that. That came in loud and clear. Um. <laughs> It's funny how it comes in. Yeah, it is. That's just how they worded it. Frog legs never got it, never made it to the kitchen. When you're looking for them, is there a certain place they hide? Yeah, under, there's one right there. That's a real frog. He just planted this here. <laughs> you don't have to put anything on it. Um, Elliot normally doesn't use anything, but we tried to put a little leaf on it <laughs> to make it more attractive. <laughs> it didn't work. There are a lot of dragonflies around, so maybe he's full. Excellent frog catcher. Thank you. I learned from the best. Oh, okay. Let's see, not really as slimy as I would think, not as slippery. A little a little more rough skin than I thought. Um I can feel it's a little heart beating. He's very cold, he's cool, and and I can feel him breathing, or her breathing. Woo! And, um, that's my frog. <laughs> he's perfect. Um, well, Elliot said, why don't you try to catch him with your hands? So I tried that. I tried moving toward him. Then he just faced a different direction, and I, he didn't even bite the hook. We just, I just hooked him up for under his, his chin. He's big. That's a bullfrog right there. Eight inches? Nine inches? Maybe that's almost a foot long. Bullfrogs on your bullfrogs on your mind. Have you ever woke up bullfrogs on your mind? That's a sure sign you got bullfrogs on your mind. I'm just trying to sort of work with what I'm hearing, which is from not just you, but from other people we have spoken to in the area who said, no bullfrogs for years and years and years. I can't remember ever seeing a bullfrog. And then wham, there are bullfrogs. And now there are bullfrogs. And then the head herpetologist for the state of Kentucky saying, not possible. They were there. And I'm just trying to figure out how we can... Um, well, I go to FSU uh, now in, 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 uh, in graduate studies. and You don't argue with an academic. You, you let them talk. And, and they're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they've got the smarts. Uh, but um, as, as a 
just as a practical matter, as a kid, up until um, I went to college and lived out on that farm in the summertime, there were no bullfrogs. And you know, you know, the, you know, there's no bullfrogs that go, mm, mm, mm. and and if if you're from the city, and and you uh, you can't sleep, but when they have when the bullfrogs are there, you get used to it. And so there were no bullfrogs up until Daddy built the frog farm. They just weren't. They came from Texas. He brought them up there, put them in this frog pond. And they went down river and Delican River and there's frogs all over the place. Right now, as you and I have seen, if you go up to northern Kentucky, there's frogs everywhere. Little teeny ponds in front of somebody's house. There'll be bullfrogs. Since you, you guys initiated this, and I thought about it a lot and tried to draw in my memory bank and to um, put it all together. And then, I don't think there's any question about it. I don't think there's any question. It's a story, but it's a true story. I said, blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine on the one that's gone and proved untrue. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine on the one that's gone and left me blue. Well, it was on one moonlit night, the stars shine bright. Whisper from on high, your love said goodbye. I went online to do some research, and every time I googled Kentucky Bullfrog, what I got was a list of recipes for some drink I'd never heard of, called the Kentucky Bullfrog. It says that you take a, a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew soda, and you pour it out to where the label starts, the top of the label, and then you pour into it vodka and two packages of Kool-Aid. We're gonna get to the grocery store and get what we need and give it a try. Rode right up to Miss Mouse's door, uh-huh. Rode right up to Miss Mouse's door, uh-huh. Rode right up to Miss Mouse's door, give three loud raps and a very big roar, uh-huh. Called that either two cups of Vodka. Said Miss Mouse, are you within? Uh -huh. Two cups of two packages of Kool-Aid. Said Miss Mouse, are you within? Uh -huh. <laughs> said Miss Mouse, are you within? Tropical yes, punch is like that's what Kool-Aid is. Uh -huh. Tropical punch. Please scan your next item. Mouth, one cup vodka, mouth, one liter Mountain Dew lime soda, two packages Kool-Aid. This is two liters. Pour out or consume the Mountain Dew until it reaches the top of the label. Add the Kool-Aid and fill the rest up with vodka. Shake and chill. Okay, we can work this out. I think we can just wait for the cup to hurt the I don't want to hurt it. <laughs> This is going to be the tricky part. Uncle Rat shook his fat sides, uh huh. Uncle Rat laughed, shook his fat sides, uh huh. Uncle Rat laughed, shook his fat sides to think his knees could be 